Welcome, welcome, everyone. It is build day. Welcome back. Uh, today, we are building my first Alice board. We are building the AE Boards Praxis IM. Um, this is, as you can see here, uh, from the Praxis series. Uh, IM, in this case, stands for Injection Molded. This is a keyboard that has existed in aluminum before, uh, I believe. Um, so Injection Molded Rev 1, I have the blue one here in my hands. Uh, we've got a great little parts list on the side here. We've got our top, our bottom, it has an aluminum plate. Uh, the case and plate fasteners, which are M3x6. A hot swap PCB, some feet, and it actually comes with uh, AE boards, stabies, the stabilizers, uh, which is pretty cool when you have a company that makes a keyboard and makes stabilizers uh, that you just kind of get both uh, with it. I think that is a pretty great little combination to have there, some good synergy. Or is it synergy when it's the same company? I guess. Um, integration, maybe. There we go. What's funny to me about the uh, the packing list here that you get five sets of stabies is that on the box, you have one for backspace, one for return, one for right space, one for left space, and one for left shift. But when you look at the PCB compared to the picture on the box, it doesn't actually support a uh, full-size backspace to put a uh, stab there. I'm wondering if maybe the aluminum version of this or something uh, did support full backspace at some point. So I've got an extra stabby lubed, all that to say, which may not be a bad thing. I recently rebuilt my Rama U80, my Moon Stealth one, um, with stabies for the first time. I've been trying out a lot of stabilizers lately. I'm really liking TX stabs. And so when I rebuilt my U80 for interesting reasons, um, I tried to set up my stabies and I, I, I gotta be honest, I wasn't super impressed with them for the first set. They don't, I really feel like I prepared them correctly. They feel a little sluggish and they didn't sound, I felt as good as the TX stabs I've been trying lately. Now, to address the sluggishness, I did lube these ones. I'm pulling out here as long as we're talking parts. Um, I did lubricate these ones, specifically the plastic on plastic housings with 205G0 from Crytox, um, as I usually do, <clears throat> excuse me, um, but a lot more lightly than I did on the set that's on my U80. So that's one improvement. Uh, I made. I also checked that the wires were balanced this time. It seems to be good. The main issue with this set I used on my U80 was the spacebar ticked really, really badly. Um, and the stabies, if you've ever seen, come in a little box like this. These ones actually came in a baggie in this box, so that's you know, cool. Um, but they come in this box. I, I feel like I remember hearing part of the reason for that was to protect the wires from bending, and I guess I assumed they wouldn't leave the factory bent. Um, so I didn't bother to check if they're bounced. So that may have been my bad on the U80 ones. All that to say, uh, I'm excited to try Stabies again, and I'm excited I did one step before this to learn that maybe you don't need as much 205 on the housings, and maybe that's causing some of the sluggishness that I was feeling. But all that to say, uh, funny that it comes with five when it in fact cannot use five with the supplied PCB, but I guess now I have a backup if uh, I really scuffed one of these um, putting it together. So uh, I mentioned I have the blue one of uh, the Praxis IM here. Let me show you that. So we get our uh, Valor Hot Swap PCB, which I've already tested. Always, always, always test your PCBs. Uh, it's a really nice blue. It's kind of a, oh, kind of an ocean blue. I guess I can unpack it now. Kind of an ocean blue, I might say. It, uh, it almost, I'm looking up at my monitor it almost looks a little green, but I haven't color corrected this yet. So post color correction, it might look more like the kind of ocean blue kind of color, I would call it. It looks really nice and it's stupid light. Um, this is my first Alice board. I previously, um, if you have watched my channel for any uh, length of time with any consistency, I've previously used the AE3 by IV Works, one of my all time favorite keyboards. Um, which is an Orizu layout. A lot of people call this Alice mistakenly. The chief signifier between the two is the arrow keys. Um, so the Orizu layout has the arrow keys, usually doesn't have the right B key. Um, whereas the Alice layout, no arrow keys, typically has two B keys. Up to you how you wanna figure out if you use that or not, I prefer left B. So part of me thinks I should make this a function key, but I have a function key here and a function key here because since this is 60%, really it's kind of like a faux ergonomic 60%, which also puts, uh, well, 60% HHKB, you know, pretty uh, close. This doesn't have three modifiers 
next to the space, just like HHKB, obviously on a 60%, you'd have another modifier here and here, but short version, you know, it's got function here. So I also kind of want it here for sake of muscle memory. Um, because then when you look at a, you know, 65%, which has arrows like this does, your, where, where your layer key is, is a little different. So yeah, I got some decisions to make <laughs> on, on the mapping. It feels weird to be having a keyboard that is 60% that I feel like in some ways has too many keys because it's such a small keyboard, but there's this weird dichotomy uh, between how many keys you have and it, it almost feels like you have excess keys in some places. Um, but all that to say, I'm very excited to try the Alice layout because I've really quite enjoyed this and I've been learning to really enjoy HHKB using my thermal. I really thought the lack of arrow keys would annoy me and in some situations it still does. I'm glad I have a variety in my collection. Um, but this is very small, light, and portable. This is much taller uh, in this dimension and has a big old stainless steel weight on it. Um, so yeah, I think this is gonna be a really interesting build. Um, it also comes with, uh, so it, it, in the box here, uh, the stabies were in here. The All the fasteners were in here the M2 by fours for the stabies along with the O-rings and then the 16 M3 by six uh, fasteners that hold together the case and hold the plate onto the case. This is a top mount. Uh, and then it comes with some very chunky feet. Um, there you go, kind of the lozenge shaped ones actually very similar to the Mode 65. Which is a beautiful keyboard, by the way. This is my all polycarbonate one. I got a polycarbonate bottom uh, in the extras so I could try all polycarb. This thing weighs nothing too. I really, really like this. And QPVT Terminal by Max Voltar Keyboards is just fantastic. So anyway, off topic. I'm very excited to try this layout. Um, I like the blue. I think blue is a cool color. I kind of like that they only sold this in colors. I'm so predisposed, I guess, to buying the grayscale version of stuff because I feel like it matches keycaps better. Um, but this time I was like forced, air quotes forced, don't know, I had to buy a keyboard, forced to buy a color. Um, so what we're gonna be using for keycaps, I also have not used my DSA milkshake yet. Um, and it's a little boring, but I think I'm not gonna use any of the colorful keys um, and just make use of the white keycaps. I think that combo will look really good on here. It's been quite a while since I used DSA, although actually my AV3 I just showed has DSA 1930 on it um and using this as the keycap set will give me a good uh test bed for the sound test for this in which i'll compare dsa milkshake and cherry milkshake in the sound test now switches <laughs> um i've gotten into franken switching pretty heavily specifically for cream based linear switches um the, the reason that's so attractive is because um, i actually have a cream paca here um, but you may notice that stem does not look very creamy, does it? Um, this is a hyperglide black, or not hyperglide, sorry, a kale black stem. Um, kale is the manufacturer of the key, uh, creams for novel keys, and the kale black and kale red, the non box versions, just the standard versions like this, use the same stem. And what's so attractive about that stem is that it's long pull. It's not crazy long pull, it's only slightly long pull. But if you put that long pull housing in, or long pull stem, into a housing not designed to have a long pull. When you press the stem, the stem, the bottom pole of the stem, the skinny part, is the first thing to hit the bottom housing. And I really, really like that sound of the, the hard pull bottom out. Um, it also slightly reduces the travel, um, which I, I'm fine with. I, I wouldn't say it's my favorite part about long pull. I really like the sound, um, but it also does serve to shorten the travel. So, and then, I mean, some switches are built like that. This is a Boba LT from Kazoo, the uh, U4Ts, the Bobe U4Ts are probably his most famous switch. Um, but the uh, this is the linear, LT stands for linear thock, also long pull, but the housing is designed to have a long pull stem, so you don't quite get the travel change, but the pull is still the first thing to hit the bottom, et cetera, et cetera. So all that to say, I'm very into uh, linear Franken switching, specifically cream-based Franken switches, but I've got this friend, uh, goes by Matt Vortex, and uh, every now and then on Discord, he will just send me switches 
um, like almost annoyingly often and he knows me very well in terms of my taste of switches. So the other day he sends me a link to knckeys.com. I'll put the uh, website on, on screen here. Um, knckeys.com who are just selling stems. Um, KNC Keys Long Stems, in parentheses they're called Unga Bunga Stems, why? I don't know. Um, and they're this really kind of cheerful red color. Um, so I got those. What's interesting about these stems though is that they are 13.9 millimeters long. Um, so I bought the stems because Matt gets me, he knows I like long pole, and Matt hates long pole for the record. Um, <laughs> So when I got these, I was like, oh, what housing am I putting these in? He decided that wasn't his problem. I made sure it was. So he picked um, mauve housings. Mauve, mauve. That's another layer of why this switch is funny is Matt's British. I'm clearly not. Um, so we say that the, the color name that I'll put on screen here so you can make your own opinion. We say it either mauve or mauve. Um, so we, we disagree on that. But he quite likes these switches and said I should try them. Um, so giving them a shot. And I was like, oh, well, we need, we need spring. So I, I found, you know, a US vendor who had mobs. It was Canon Keys. Um, and I was like, oh, I, I really like long springs as well. I, I like the way the, the high preload of a long spring feels in a linear switch. Uh, so I looked at their long springs and well, I mean, they, they had long springs in 69 grams. So how was I not right, right, right? Can you blame me? So it is a, a long stem which Matt hates, in a housing that we can't agree with the pronunciation on with a 69 gram long spring. So these switches are really everything Matt hates in kind of a beautiful way and kind of everything I love in kind of a beautiful way. Um, just like here. They're a very snappy switch and have a hilariously short 2.8 millimeter travel. For reference, an MX style switch typically travels four millimeters. That's what's known as full travel. Um, a lot of switches, you know, especially with long poles, will only travel like three and a half, 3.6, you know, around there. These are 2.8. Matt and I didn't realize till after I ordered these that there's actually a document on the store page for these that explains, you know, roughly what your travel distance will be in different housings. We picked seriously like the shortest combo. So this is just about the most Ian and the least Matt switch in the world. So thus they are called Vortex switches. Um, because why not name them after him, you know? Of Earth switches, eh, not very catchy. Vortex switches, and they're very handsome. Um, I think is a pretty cool name. So those are our switches. Um, DSA Cherry Milkshake Keycaps, Caps, Vortex Franken switches, Stabby Stabilizers, all in the AE boards, Praxis IM Round 1 in blue, purchased from Space Cables. So, um, I think... That was finally enough preamble. Uh, you know, only like, you know, 10 minutes. Not that bad for me, all said. Let's get into, let's get into building this keyboard. So we need this bad boy. Uh, the rest of the box is empty. You just get your screws in here, your feet, which I just put off to the side, uh, and your um, stabies up in here. Very simple packaging otherwise, uh, kind of reminiscent of the um, Stellar 65 packaging, also sold by Space Cables. Obviously this is, AE boards packaging, but just kind of reminiscent with the outline on the front, the info on one end. Um, pretty cool, but we are done with that for the moment. I've left my PCB out in its static bag for the moment. Um, this is kind of a cool construction. I dig this. The Whenever, whenever you injection mold something, there's gonna be a parting line from the mold. It looks like they hit it right along this bottom edge and the top part of the keyboard, so this is the piece you see wraps all the way around and goes all the way to the bottom. And then the, the base is like nested within that. So looking around the edge, you can't actually see the mold line as far as I can tell, which I think is a nice look. Uh, and then all the screw points, both for the plate and the case, are um, heat set inserts, so you're not actually screwing into plastic, which I think is also good practice. So, I dig it, I think this is a cool keyboard. Um, I wasn't, like, I didn't know this board existed before Space Cables announced it went on sale, but it hit a couple sweet spots for me. It is very cheap, I'll put the price on screen here because I already forgot. Um, it's very cheap, it's very light, and it's a layout I haven't tried yet, and I love trying new layouts. I wanted to try proper Alice for a while because I use my um, Arizu AV3 so much. This plate's a little warped, so I'm just gonna gently bend it here while I'm talking. Um, I've used Arizu for so long with arrows, and initially I, you know, kind of, not denounced, but like figured I probably wouldn't use Alice because I like, I need my arrow keys, but then the thermal 
taught me to love, um, you know, the 60% layout in some ways. That is a very warped plate. Snapping the switches into this will resolve that, but I'm just seeing if I can get rid of some of the, the bend before I put it in here. The less preload you have in, in weird places in an assembly, the, uh, the better, generally speaking. But uh, yeah, so th th this hit a lot of boxes for me that I didn't plan on getting this keyboard, but I'm really excited about it uh, now that it is in my collection, so to speak. Uh, it'll be an interesting contrast to the AV3, because the AV3 is just a heavy beast of a uh, keyboard. Um, and has arrow keys, whereas this does not. So let us prep our PCB. Uh, again, I have already tested this. Always, 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 before you build a keyboard, plug your PCB in, test each location with a pair of tweezers, make sure it actually responds, um, because you'll be really mad if you find that out after you assemble it. I don't imagine that is the order you want to do those things in. Um, this has some interesting RGB. It's got it under caps lock, which makes sense, caps lock indicator. It's got it under the nav column, which I think is interesting. Um, but then what is really cool, I think, is it's got this string of LEDs around the edge that are actually pointing outward towards the, uh, let's see if my camera will behave here. Uh, it's got the string of LEDs that are actually pointing out towards the edge. Um, and because it's a see-through case, uh, I imagine that'll be a pretty cool uh, effect. Like I said, this is the Valor Rev2 Hot Swap PCB. Nice, simple, hot swap. Can't complain about that. Looks like it's stepped caps. Nope, I was looking at the wrong switch. App ah, still looks like it's stepped caps, though. Split backspace, again, even though the box, and the plate, for that matter, so this is what I was talking about. The plate has cutouts for stabilizers, if you, if you had a full-size backspace, but there's no way to do that, which is fine. On a 60%, I wouldn't want full backspace anyway. Honestly, on 65%, so I don't like full backspace. I, I prefer split back um, when I can have it. So, let's do it. Oh, that's what those holes are for. I was trying to figure out there's these two huge holes in the PCB, and I thought at first maybe that's a manufacturing thing so it can be dropped onto a test jig with like pins sticking up out of it, and it uses those to align, but it's so you can get to the top mount holes because you need to put a screw through the back into the case. So there's a hole there. Ah, that's smart. I love it. You love to see it. So, because I've tested my PCB, we're going to jump right in uh, to putting on our stabies here. Um, stabies attach just like Duroc stabilizers do. Uh, you got a clip on the wire side and a screw post on the non-wire side. The big holes in the PCB, you'll see these pairs. There's a pair here, pair here, pair here, and a pair here. The big side of the pair of holes is where the clip dips on in. The screw side fits in, and if you've done it correctly, it will the housing will sit flat against the uh, PCB. And then you screw it in from the back, give it a wiggle, make sure your housings aren't loose, and you're on your way to getting your stabilizers installed. So I am going to uh, get all these installed and tested, and I'll be right back with you. All right, let's talk about stabilizers. <laughs> I have tried twice now to flip this PCB over to screw these stabilizers in and they are falling out. Um, I have never had that experience with Duroc stabilizers in memory. Um, and obviously TX stabilizers are clip-in. You just need to flip over to install the wedge. I don't think I've used TX in a video yet, but I'll definitely show that when I do. Um, I have to flip this over somehow to screw these in. And every time I've done it, one or more of these has fallen out. So that's annoying. Yeah, nope, yep, see, another one just fell out. Oh boy, oh god, god, I'm getting XHT all over my work mat. Oh boy. How can I flip this over without these falling out? Uh, I may just need to stand it up and do it. So, uh, while I just said, look how easy, oh my god, installing stabilizers is, uh, it can be a little fiddly. I'm finding, especially with stabies, when I did my U80, I didn't do a video about that, so it's not like you're missing something if you can't find the rebuild on the channel. Um, I had the same problem where I couldn't flip the PCB over as easily as I'm used to. Um, so, you know, that's fun. And then we got an XHT all over my table because I probably over applied on the staves. Um, 
Although I do find because of the way the wire clips in on Stabies, um, it's actually a little more difficult to uh, uh, not get it on the outside of the housing. Um, that could be a me thing, who knows. I'm gonna pin them in place with the plate. Is that gonna, is that gonna help me? That is gonna help me. Look at that, problem solving. Did they all stay in when the plate just fell off? Uh, yes, okay, cool. Now I'm gonna screw these in. All right, <laughs> see you on the other side again. screwed in, these stabies have turned out significantly better uh, than the U80 ones, so maybe I just had a wire balancing issue. I'll need to uh, try another set and keep experimenting. It is annoying how often they fall out <laughs> um, while you're trying to install them. I will be honest there, I prefer TX stabs uh, for that. I will say these are much easier to assemble than TX stabs. When you're clipping the wire into TX, it's so tight, which admittedly will help reduce, you know, possible uh, uh, points of slippage and rattle, um, but uh, these do assemble much easier. So yeah, you know, good with the bad. Um, so far, if you had to make me pick one, I'd probably pick TX just because I've had easier luck with them, but I think these will be just as good. Um, the Vortex, which is hilariously short travel, even just tapping on the little ones here. Um, one of my stabies did feel a little sluggish, so I replaced this one with the fifth one and it feels a little bit better, so. Um, I guess that works. So uh, my advice would be with Stabies, blue real light. Um, I, would, I would say as light as you can uh, comfortably go. Um, I, I would almost be curious to use some of these dry just to see how close they already are tolerance wise. Uh, but uh, that'll be an experiment for another time. So speaking of Vortex switches, it's time. I am going to clip these in. The plate does not mount to the PCB in any fashion other than through the force of the switches. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to clip. Ooh, those are very tight. This might be interesting. I'm going to do one corner. And I'm going to do the other corner. The reason you kind of want to start that way is it locks the plate in rotation and you want to use the two farthest points possible for that. I'm now going to grab another corner here, checking my legs before I clip them in here. I did find the uh, the mauve, mauve legs uh, to be weirdly fragile, like the leaf really wanted to fall out a lot of the time while I was lubing these. Um, so take that as you will. I don't know if that actually needs anything or if I was just kind of making that up, um, but uh, there you go. I'm gonna grab my plate forks. This is clearly gonna be a situation where those are helpful. Plate forks are an amazing thing. These are from uh, Ding Keys uh, Designs, Canadian company, I believe. Um, and so you just kind of put the fork around the position the switch is gonna go in. So when you clip the switch down, uh, the plate doesn't uh, get pushed down as well. The tricky thing is you normally you can use these to do multiple switches at once. And actually one of the very few places we can is right at the top here. Um, but because uh, Alice and Rizu layouts kind of have that faux ergo tilt, um, it, you can't, yeah. It, but actually in this situation, uh, the top row at least, well actually, you know what I meant? Oh, you know what? I can snake this plate all the way down because there are no top mounted components. Oh, Snapple y'all, that's gonna be, I'm sorry I said oh Snapple, immediately as soon as I said it. What's that from? Parks and Rec, Jean Ralphio says it at uh, Entertainment 720. I'm deeply sorry I said oh Snapple, everybody. That was inappropriate of me. Um, but I just realized that because there's no top mounted components like diodes or anything, I can actually weasel that fork all the way down to the bottom and then just slowly pull it out as I do the rows. So typically if you've watched other videos of mine, um, I put switches in pseudo randomly, which I guess I still kind of could. Um, the, the thought there being to even out pressure on the plate as you're snapping the switches in um, and not like, you know, go from one end to the other and you're kind of building up mechanical pressure as you go. Um, but this is a huge benefit being able to use the plate fork. So uh, what I might do is go uh, bottom up, but kind of, you know, still go pseudo random as I can. Oh, it's funny, you know, actually this plate also has support over here for a full-sized right shift, you can see. Um, 
and it has support for non-stepped caps. But the PCB does it. Kind of funny. Uh, kind of like the um, the thermal uh, had a much more universal plate than PCB. That's interesting. Looks like this switch. Oh yeah, there's a, a different bottom row option here that isn't available on this PCB as well. You can see there's a little extra room next to this uh, left space stab and a little extra room and that cutout next to it to use a slightly shorter uh, bar length there. Isn't that neat? I love that kind of stuff, seeing um, the echoes of how the design process went in the final product. Well, cool beans. That's great news that my plate forks work. Um, I'm going to slide the other one in. You know, sometimes I buy two of something and go, that was kind of stupid. Totally on it this time. Big fan. Then I have two plate forks. I'm going to snap in Vortex switches and then we'll get on to... Uh... I'll probably put keycaps on before I mount this. Again, just because it's top, uh, top mount into plastic, I don't want to put a whole bunch of stress on the plastic top case if I don't have to. And these are pretty tight keycaps because I haven't used them yet, so... Um... I may actually just do that one big time lapse. I will snap switches in. I will uh, pause and come back if anything interesting happens. If not, I'll just go straight into putting on my keycaps after that. So see you on the other side of something. checks out great. Uh, I didn't appear to bend any uh, switch legs. Actually, when I was testing the stabilizers, I hardcore uh, bent this one. I was able to fix that though, so all set. Uh, next up, I'm going to time lapse through some keycap action here. I'm certainly going to have to pull up the novel key sight on my monitor just off screen here so I remember what is in what kit. Uh, normally, I use the JTK trays for my keycaps so I can like see how they uh, lay out. Uh, in the tray, but there's so oh god, there's so many keycaps in these sets that this would have been like maybe three JTK trays and they're like 20 bucks each. So, um, yeah, the upside of being DSA though is that they're all the same profile, um, so I won't need to like oh, I found uh, a delete key, but oh no, it's the wrong profile, so I just need to look at the legends and, and go for it. So, that'll be our next time lapse here. Uh, just out of the weirdo base kit, I got most of the way there. I just need some space bars. I think I'm gonna use the milkshake key here again when I built my thermal for the first time. I set that function key to be the little milkshake. I thought that was quite cute to complement the, the set. For this function key, I used what I believe is the actual function key. Uh, the upside of the weirdo font is I guess anything can be anything. So um, yeah, that's what we're gonna call that. I have these uh, command both as alt for the moment controls up here and then I have home page up page down because I put delete under uh, backspace under a layer. That's just my muscle memory at this point. Um, yeah, I don't think I'm going to use any of the colorful keys here. Um, finding all these keycaps was quite the, uh, the privilege as I'm sure you'll see in the time lapse. I uh, missed a couple. I forgot that there's basically two of each number because there's a numpad kit and because it's DSA it's all the same profile. So, oh wow, look at that. The milkshake key I wanted is right on top. That's fantastic. So, milkshake for our function. And now I need some space bars. Those are at the bottom. Gosh dang it. That's the way she goes. All right, and I need a 225 and 275 space. You're a three. You're a three. 
275 concave. I forget there's convex ones of those sizes. Just gonna grab everything that looks kind of right. Let's see if any of it is convex. They're not right. No, all these feel concave. That's cool. New memories there. 275, so you will go here. And 225, you will go here. Interesting that the three U's are convex, but the rest of these are concave. If you don't know what I mean, the three U is on the left. You can see the top bends outward, convex. And the two, uh, two, 275, whatever this is in my right hand, is concave, bends inward. Um, that might be kind of uncomfortable. I guess we'll see what happens. Don't want to uh, judge it before I try it. Uh, is there anything else in here I might like? Yeah, see, like, the, the idea of using the blue is kind of cool, but it's a different blue. I can already tell just looking at it. Red and blue contrast each other pretty well. Yeah, you know what? I think I'm going to stick monochrome. I can always change it. I guess this is keyboard ASMR or it just sounds terrible and I'm gonna remove this in editing. We'll see what happens. Oh, actually blue and yellow are kind of cute. I don't love yellow as a color. That's something I can try though, because like the little, uh, this is in the backspace, but like a little yellow backspace action. Could be kind of cute. I think the shifts coming in yellow. Yeah, that, that, that could be interesting. Probably not. I'm not a big yellow fan. Alrighty, I think that's a pretty handsome plate PCB combo. I am feeling that. Honestly, you could use the keyboard like this uh, if you just had a bottom plate on it, which is, I guess, kind of what the Orange Boy Ergo is. Um, is is just that. I made sure to get the homing FNJ because this is a uniform profile. It's already going to be challenging enough to find where I'm at. But uh, the homing keys on DSA work pretty well for me. You can actually see how much smaller the contact surfaces on the homing keys compared to the non-homing keys. It's actually, it's quite dramatic. It doesn't look dramatic when you're like looking at the board from like usage distance. Uh, or I guess a little further than usage distance. At usage distance, it's pretty obvious, but uh, there you go. Oh, I have split space. I could put function under, boy, I got some options. All right, let's build the keyboard, assemble the keyboard. So now we need our top case. I'm gonna be careful here as I put this in to make sure the USB port aligns. What is not pushing through? Are any of my keys too big? Nope, maybe just... Oh, I think the plate might be hitting the, uh, the ribs here. There we go. There's these sort of uh, strengthening the ribs around the outside edge of the keyboard and my plate was stuck on one of those. That's all good. There we go. Now we're all in place. We're all butted up against the, yep. This might be a prime candidate to throw some O-rings in at some point. I want to use it stock first. Um, but O-ring mounting, this could be kind of fun. So we're using our M3 by six fasteners. We have 16 of them. I'm betting eight go on the plate, eight go on the case. Yep, that's how it looks. Cool. So I'm gonna screw in, just like keycaps, I'm gonna screw in one corner, not super tight. And I'm gonna screw in the other corner. Also not super tight. Just uh, enough, just like the amount of torque you can spin one of these with, which is not a lot. Keep everything kind of loosey-goosey so as all the other screws come in, everything can kind of settle into its natural positioning. Oh yeah, now you get to use the holes in the PCB to uh, get, get to those. You can, I'll screw this one in, then I'll hold it up so you can see it here. You can see those holes in the PCB give you access to the one I just screwed in and the one I've yet to screw in. Pretty clever. That way you don't need to make a, a significantly more complex PCB design up here. You can just cut it straight across and uh, give you more room for the uh, USB support component tree there as well. So that's pretty cool. Smart design. What's interesting... Yeah, okay, yep, yep, yeah, yeah, no, that, that makes sense, never mind. Never mind. I actually 
actually, you know, I might leave these not terribly tight with eight of them this close together on the edge of the PCB. Don't need to like really crank down on these. I guess if I notice any buzzing, I can come back and tighten them, but I think finger tight is gonna be good. Here, let me, uh... Cool. Uh, let's do feet and then screw on the base. And we're done. We have a functioning keyboard then. It's always amazing to me. I built how many keyboards I don't I know at this I built I don't know how many keyboards at this point. And every time it's like kinda, you know, it doesn't look like a keyboard yet, doesn't look like a keyboard, then all of a sudden, bam, it's a keyboard. It catches me off guard every time. Off guard, that's generous. It surprises me every time how suddenly uh, everything comes to, together. A whole lot of nothing happens, and then a whole lot of something happens. Just kind of funny. Yes, these are really, really similar to the Mode 65 feet. I mean, they're just these pill shapes that fit with these indentations on the on the bottom case. I need to uh, grab my food scale here before we wrap the video up and uh, uh, make sure it's clean this time. Um, and yeah, uh, weigh my other keyboards that I had here for comparison's sake, because I think my all polycarbonate mode 65 is my lightest keyboard currently. It's got no weight inside of it, so it's already lighter than the Aki, which is also plastic. Um, the stainless steel on the AV3 immediately disqualifies it for being lighter, and the thermal, also being all aluminum is quite light, but I still don't think I'm gonna beat this because this is all plastic, baby. All right, so we're gonna drop our booty into place here. Cool, those are very recessed screw holes, so I'll probably just drop those in. But we will do a corner. And does that. I'm trying to feel like if, there we go, so. Yeah, don't need a lot of tension on these either, actually. The tolerances on this are quite good so far, it seems. Go. What I'm doing is I'm resting my finger on the edge between the two pieces, so I kind of feel when the screw pulls down on the uh, bottom case to make it uh, kind of flush with the bottom edge of the top case. What's interesting about this, and I'm sure this was a consideration for the aluminum that carried over, is uh, there's a little scoop on the side here. Uh, that might partially be for styling, but I imagine on the aluminum one, you pretty much needed that to get your fingers under it to, to pick it up. So those are still, those scoops are still there. They bothered putting that in the tooling. So yeah, maybe it is a design feature. I mean, if they bothered putting it in the injection molding tooling, which as I've discussed in like my drop key cap video and uh, probably the icky video, I probably mentioned, or no, I didn't make a video about the icky build. I um, I built that one uh, on Discord with some friends, um, including uh, Mr. Vortex of, uh, of now Vortex Switch fame. Um, injection molding, and that's what, what we're seeing with like keyboards like the icky, like this one, um, the Bauer Lite, that Omnitype uh, is working. That does not feel like it's threading correctly. Feels like it's cross-threading. Although it's a brass insert, it shouldn't cross-thread that readily. Maybe there's just quite a bit of pressure here. Um, making the mold is far and away the most expensive part of injection molded keyboards. Then you can sell the keyboard itself for quite cheap, hence this one being the price it was, which I'll put on screen again here. Um, so it, it's, it's interesting that they made the tool that much more complex to retain those features. So maybe it is a, a design Things you certainly don't need those to pick this keyboard up. You can one hand this. No problemo. I would like to know how stuff is made. Pretty cool. All right. Ba -ba. God, weighs nothing. Weighs absolutely nothing. Oh, it sounds quite good though. Certainly more hollow at the top, which makes sense. You know, it's a wedge shape, so there's a lot more air up here. I'm wondering if you could. Uh, do a silicone pour into this if you wanted to deaden it some. Yeah, silicone pour would probably be the move because then you could still see the LEDs and everything. If you put kill mat or uh, polyfill or, or something back here, you would see it through here where silicone would just make it more, uh, more opaque through the back. That sounds really, really nice though. Uh, let me grab the, the food scale here before the sound tests. Yeah, packaging. All right, here's 
getting up gross. That's not cool beans. Grams, we are weight in grams. Cool. Can the camera see it? The camera can see it. So this is 605 grams. Seven hundred nineteen grams. Wow, a whole hundred grams heavier on uh, on this one. I bet. Uh, well, let's see without the aluminum back here. Only 60 grams less. This doesn't weigh as much as I thought of what it does. This does put it significantly closer in weight. Though, you can still feel this one's just a little bit heavier. It's also a smaller package. You know, the lengths are not nearly the uh, same. Um, so this feels like a denser package because your eyes perceive it as a smaller object that weighs more. Um, but yeah, then this is, you know, so 661. Yeah, basically 60 grams. For that aluminum uh, back piece, I suppose I also, yeah, that artisan doesn't add that much weight, but, uh, so I do have a new champion for, for lightest keyboard, that's pretty cool. I already forgot what it was, I think it was 606 or something like that, 605. Let's get Thermal Boy in here. Yeah, <laughs> this is certainly one of my lighter keyboards and it's still uh, over twice as much as, uh, as the Praxis is here. And then last but not least, the certainly tanky, ugh, stainless steel laden AV3. Yeah, <laughs> two and a half kilograms. So I can carry around four of these uh, in the in the weight of, of one AV3. But I still love it so much. Uh, it's interesting, I was just looking at the homing keys on this. The homing keys look quite different. On the uh, novel keys, you can see how much smaller the top of the homing key cap is compared to the homing key caps on the, uh, this is nice PBT, made DSA 1930. Quite interesting little, interesting little difference there, so. Uh, yes, I certainly have a new lightest keyboard in the collection, uh, and a surprise to nobody. I was surprised how much lighter it is than the Mode 65 that it's, you know, what is that? Uh, 600, 720-ish. Yeah, like 15% heavier, a little bit over, 15% uh, lighter, rather. In the mode 65, but how about that? That looks pretty cool. I, I do like that blue color. Still on my little monitor, I'm looking at it, it looks more green than it does in my hand, so I'm hoping the color correction fixes that because it's a very handsome uh, emeraldy kind of blue color. So, yeah, big fan of that. I like how clean the outside is too. You know, no branding on the uh, plastic. A little bit of branding on the uh, PCB that you can see through the bottom. You can see the Valor text and the, uh, the eagle there. I assume it's an eagle? Hawk? I'm bad at birds. I don't know. Oh, there's a reset button. Of course there is. Just didn't notice it before. Um, but yeah, nothing, no branding visible from the top. I love that. Let me uh, plug it in here and see how the uh, LED shines through. Woo! Kind of a halo if you will. There's that one LED effect that kind of chases around. I bet that would look kind of cool. Let me uh, open via here and uh, see if we can pull that one up here. Oh, I had my color set to white. So the saturation level as you, oh, that's interesting. As you move your color more towards white, in the via color picker, the less saturation it applies to the effect. That's kind of cool. I didn't know it did that. Next, let's try that again then. Alpha's mods. Oh, there's no alpha lights, so it's just one color, the, the mod color. Let's pick a more handsome color here. Let's do pink. Pink and blue look nice together. Whoa, looks like purple. Uh, I'm not sure I can make that appear any more pink than it does. Oh, I guess actually moving towards red. Yeah, of course, because then it gets filtered through the blue. Okay, so we're gonna do pseudo pink <laughs> and it looks nothing like pink on my monitor again hopefully color correction helps with that uh, gradient up down okay so these are pinker near the top i've got one rogue led down here i'm not sure what's going on with uh with that gradient left to right that's pretty cool there you go breathing we know what breathing is oh here we go this is that's neat so it changes the saturation level as a chase around so these are kind of all white and then there's one saturated unit that goes around. That's kind of a neat effect. These are fun. 
and Val. Okay, so that's just on or off. So that's kind of the Knight Rider sort of effect I was thinking of, although Knight Rider would bounce back and forth. Pinwheel set. Oh, okay, so there's multiple spots chasing each other. It's funny because there's no LEDs along the back here, so the pattern kind of leaps across the, the back of the keyboard. Not quite as good as uh, I think it could. Uh, it doesn't uh, do the effects justice, I don't think. Because, well, there's some delay of it getting across. Yeah, interesting. Interesting. Uh, is there a, uh, a bounce back and forth? Rainbow moving chevron. My goodness. Whoa. All right, Vegas mode. There you go. Goodness gracious, that is colorful. This would be a really cool keyboard in clear plastic with the uh, uh, way those LEDs are. Obviously, the blue is going to taint anything you uh, do with it here. Dual beacon. Oh, that's kind of cool. It's almost like kind of a, a breathing effect with the way the effect jumps across the back. That's kind of neat. Rainbow beacon. Looks no different. That's okay. Rainbow pinwheels. Oh, a symmetrical pattern. That actually makes better use here of the pattern ending because it kind of pulsates out from the center. That one looks pretty rad. I wonder if there's a, a color controlled version of that. Uh, Jelly Bean Raindrops, classic. Just kind of pseudo random pattern here. Hue Breathing Hue Pendulum. Oh, there you go. Bouncing back and forth between the sides of the keyboard. That's pretty cool. So the, the symmetrical effects look really good on here. Typing heat map, I feel like is not gonna work. I want to type in a text box. Typing heat map, I feel like is not gonna work. Cause they, yeah. So any of the typing based, oh dear. <laughs> any of the typing based ones, I don't think are going to work. Um, digital rain doesn't work. Yeah, so now I think these lower ones on the list are uh, backlight, not underglow, which makes sense. So that's pretty neat. We're just gonna jump back to uh, to solid color here. I'm gonna set it back to white. I can tinker with that a little bit more. I'm not wasting y'all's time, but there we are, everybody. That is the Praxis IM by AE. Okay, I gotta kill the lights up top. Actually, I wanna see that. Yeah, that's pretty cool. That's neat. Let me put my computer to sleep here too, because that screen is real bright. Oh, well, now you can't really see the keycaps though. Actually, that was helping. Sorry, computer, I misjudged you. My apologies. Hello. I put it to sleep too fast. I'm trying to wake it up and it's mad at me. That's fair enough. Oh, there we go. Hey, look at that. That's actually pretty dramatic lighting. Now that I know what's coming from, from where. That is the Praxis IM by AE Boards, sold by Space Cables here in the US. This is pretty cool. I would say if you want to try Alice, this is a great little kit. Doesn't cost very much uh, and is a, a gateway to the pseudo ergo lifestyle. Um, probably fit in pretty much any Alice case you can find online too. I can't imagine it's much chunkier than other Alice's out there. So that is, that's kind of cool how it like uh, lights up my project mat as I get closer. That's neat. I like that. That's a lot of fun. So following will be some sound tests comparing uh, the Novel Keys uh, DSA milkshake to Novel Keys Cherry milkshake. Um, so enjoy those. If you liked the video, please like it. If you have any questions, comment. I'll be happy to answer your question. And subscribe if you want to see more. Uh, the moment you're bored of watching a guy talk about keyboards, you can unsubscribe. And it is of no cost to you to do so and try it out. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.